This is Unit 2, Part 1 on Biochemistry. There are uh, essentially four major classes or groups of um, molecules that are found in living systems. These are organic compounds, organic molecules. They include carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, uh, these four groups of molecules are all uh, polymers. They are uh, made up of building blocks that are linked together by covalent bonding. Um, and so they are, uh, in fact, uh, polymerized. They're long polymers of uh, built up individual monomers. And the <coughs> individual monomers uh, in these molecules are uh, <coughs> indicated here. And as they are linked together, the kind of reaction in which they are linked is called a condensation reaction. This is also uh, known as a dehydration reaction because in the process of linking any two of these together, a water molecule is removed and the water molecule originates from an, a hydroxyl group on the end of one uh, monomer and a hydrogen at the end of the other and so these linkages these covalent bonds are made as another monomer here in this example is added on in another condensation dehydration reaction water is given off another bond is made and here now you have what's called a it is a polymer, but uh, it's quite a simple one. So it's called, in fact, a trimer because there are tri for three monomers uh, uh, connected by covalent bond. This is a dimer. When these types of molecules, carbohydrates, lipids, um, proteins, and nucleic acids are uh, broken apart, and this is the kind of reaction that occurs uh, within the digestive tract of a mammal and a human. Uh, these, this class of uh, reaction or kind of reaction is called a hydrolysis reaction. Water molecule is added at, uh, between the building blocks between the monomers, a hydroxyl here and a hydrogen there, and the two are uh, cleaved apart. A cleavage is a cut. So here you have uh, one bond being broken and then here another one being broken. And so these kind of uh, building up reactions, condensation or uh, dehydration or breaking down reactions, hydrolysis are the kind of typical kind of uh, biochemical reactions you have in the synthesis and uh, uh, breakdown of these uh, kinds of polymerized molecules that are found in all living systems. Well, the first major type we mentioned were uh, carbohydrates. They are uh, made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, and it, they have a number of different functions. A uh, major function for many of them is that they act as a source of uh, nutrient uh, to, um, that cells, living organisms, use to uh, generate energy. Uh, the individual building blocks or monomers that are found in carbohydrates are monosaccharides. And quite often uh, what you find in complex larger carbohydrates is that multiple monosaccharides are linked together um, uh, to form polysaccharides. Monosaccharides can also be called simple sugars, although uh, monosaccharide is an awful lot better than sugar. The term sugar is used in my general public to describe uh, sucrose that we use uh, to sweeten drinks, coffee, you know, uh, things like that, cake, that kind of thing. Some examples of simple uh, monosaccharides include uh, glucose, uh, fructose, galactose, deoxyribose, and ribose. I mentioned that yes, uh, uh, carbohydrates are used as uh, nutrients for generation of energy and biochemical pathways that lead towards the synthesis of uh, 
uh, energy, high energy containing molecule like uh, ATP. But uh, they, there are other types of uh, polysaccharides, or, uh, sorry, uh, monosaccharides, uh, which are involved in other types of uh, building other kinds of molecules, like deoxyribose, which is the carbohydrate that's found in DNA. DNA standing for deoxyribonucleic acid or ribose, another monosaccharide that's found in RNA, ribonucleic acid. Well, carbohydrates in general have a carbon skeleton made up of carbon molecules that have uh, oxygen, hydrogen side chain groups uh, coming off. Here's an oxygen with double bond, there's hydrogen, hydroxyl in different arrangements and therefore wherever you if you have a different kind of uh, covalent bond uh, you know if this one is replaced by a double bond to an oxygen for example then you, it would be a completely different molecule with a different name and a different uh, and different physical chemical characteristics many uh, carbohydrates especially the monosaccharides especially the ones that have uh, five or six or more uh, carbons uh, form ring structures and examples of uh, simple monosaccharides that are uh, form ring structures include uh, mannose and galactose and fructose. Now you may be asking yourself if you have to memorize these structures. No, of course not. Structures vary one from the other, uh, depending again, uh, you know, um, on the positioning and the type of uh, groups that are added, uh, that are uh, bound to the carbons. For example, the difference here between mannose and galactose, there's not a huge difference, but if you look carefully, you see that there is a hydroxyl group on carbon, this carbon two in the ring, Whereas here in galactose, there's just a hydrogen. And positioning is important also. In this case on carbon four, the hydroxyl group on mannose is below the uh, plane of the ring structure. And in this case here with galactose, it's above it. So the positioning is different. Therefore, it's a different molecule. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Monosaccharides can be linked together and uh, by uh, condensation or dehydration reactions into disaccharides, and actually uh, can carry on into more, even more complex molecules. So here's an example of a disaccharide. It's called sucrose, the one that's found in your uh, that you put into your sugar in the sugar bowl on the on the table. Uh, sucrose, in fact. Uh, in the Western Hemisphere is derived mainly from uh, cane sugar. In uh, Europe and part, other parts of Asia, it's often derived from uh, beet sugar. The individual monomers in sucrose are glucose and fructose. So in a hydrolysis reaction, you, through the use of hydrolytic enzymes, uh, you would break down sucrose into fructose and glucose. Other examples of disaccharides other than sucrose include lactose, which is a uh, carbohydrate found in uh, milk. It is made of two monomers, galactose and glucose, and maltose, which is made of two glucose molecules linked together. So sucrose is a glucose and a fructose, lactose is a galactose and a glucose, and maltose are is made of two glucose monomers. Well, there are, as I mentioned, much more complex carbohydrate molecules made up of many, many uh, individual monosaccharides linked together. And a good example of that would be glycogen. In humans, glycogen is found in the liver where it acts as a storage form for glucose. When the blood glucose level drops in the blood plasma, the glycogen, the glucose and glycogen is mobilized and uh, cut off from, you know, groups are very rapidly released from the ends of the glycogen molecule and uh, enter into the uh, bloodstream, into the plasma to raise the glu blood glucose level. Glycogen uh, is uh, 
a little bit different uh, compared to most molecules in that it does not have a definitive number of uh, uh, monomers in the polysaccharide structure. So it doesn't have a definitive number of glucose um, monosaccharide molecules linked together. It can be up to, um, with quite a wide range, up to about 50,000 uh, individual, sorry, 50,000 individual uh, glucose molecules linked together. Another, it's a storage form in the liver for, uh, as a source of glucose for the blood plasma, but it's also found in uh, skeletal muscle and used as a storage form for glucose that is converted uh, uh, through biochemical pathways in, and uh, used to form uh, energy, ATP, high energy containing compounds so that muscle can work. In animals, as I said, you find uh, glycogen, a uh, storage form of glucose. And in plants, uh, glucose is stored in the form of starch quite often. So things like rice and wheat and potatoes, and bananas, etc., etc., all of them contain starch. And starch also is uh, uh, made up of many glucose, individual glucose monomers. Uh, linked together. The linkage pattern is different from the pattern that you find in glycogen. Glycogen has shorter uh, chains. Uh, you know, it's a multi-branching uh, molecule. The difference is that uh, the chains in glycogen are much shorter than those found in starch. Okay. Let's move on now and talk about lipids. Uh, another one of the four major categories of molecules found in living systems. Lipids contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but the amount of oxygen is lower than in carbohydrates. There are a number of different major classes of lipids. Uh, the kind of thing that you call fat are in fact uh, neutral fats, so it's a better term for them, neutral fats. Another uh, very good term for them are triglycerides. Um, another class of lipids are the phospholipids that are found in cell membranes. There are also uh, a group called steroids, and you're familiar with steroids as uh, steroid hormones, but also things like cholesterol is an important steroid molecule. Cholesterol is you hear about it as being bad, but it is essential uh, in living systems. It is form it's in forms an important it forms an important part of the uh, cell membrane. Another group are the uh, eicosanoids. Many of these uh, molecules are uh, in, in fact inflammatory molecules. The eicosanoids. We'll talk more about them in the next few slides. The overall pattern of the molecule, the monomers that are built up to form uh, triglycerides, uh, are made up of three fatty acid chains linked to one, two, three, linked through covalent bonding to a glycerol. This is what you find in triglycerides in uh, animal fat tissue. Um, when it gets broken down in a um, hydrolysis reaction, the three fatty acid chains can be released from the glycerol backbone. I should point out to you that there are many different kinds of triglyceride molecules. They vary from each other in the fatty acid chains in the length of the fatty acid chain. They can be very, very long. And also in the bonding between the carbon uh, atoms uh, in the, each chain, you can have uh, quite a few uh, double bonds and the double bonds actually what they do if this is the glycerol backbone here let me draw it with a different color if you have the glycerol backbone here and the three fatty acid chains if there's a double bond it forms a kink or a bend in the molecule uh, in the fatty acid chains uh, that form part of the triglyceride and these three dots here what they are, they're not indicating a hydrogen bond. What they're indicating is that the length and 
number of um, uh, uh, groups, uh, methyl groups, is um, is uh, or carbons in the chain is variable depending upon which kind of triglyceride we're looking at. Okay, another class of lipid are the phospholipids found in um, uh, found in uh, cell membranes, important part of cell membranes. They are similar in structure to the triglycerides in that they have a glycerol backbone and two fatty acid chains. And in this case, here's an example showing a uh, double bond in this fatty acid, uh, which caused that uh, bend in the molecule. But the, uh, they don't have uh, three, they have two. Third uh, carbon in the uh, glycerol is attached to a uh, uh, phosphorus group. And so what we have, in fact, uh, fatty acids are neutral, they are uncharged, and so they are, uh, un uh, they are nonpolar in nature. And uh, phospholipid, uh, phosphate groups, or phosphorus-containing groups, are charged, so they are polar in nature. And this kind of molecule, which is both polar and nonpolar, polar in one part and nonpolar in the other, these are called amphiphilic molecules. Here's a diagram showing a more realistic uh, look of the structure of the molecule with the two fatty acid chains forming a kind of a tail and a more globular polar head of the phosphate uh, group. A third uh, major class of lipids uh, are the steroids. One of the more uh, simple basic kinds of uh, steroid molecules is cholesterol. Uh, every steroid molecule will have this structure of these four uh, flat uh, ring-like uh, structures linked together. So you have these four hydrocarbon rings all linked together in this kind of a form. If you see that in a molecule, the molecule is a steroid. It's classed as a steroid. The difference between different steroids, and uh, you should realize there are many kinds of steroids. The difference, of course, is found in which kind of groups and the positioning of the groups that are attached to the ring structure. Some examples of other types of steroids include sex hormone, steroid hormones, uh, cholesterol, uh, not cholesterol, uh, testosterone and uh, uh, estrogen, or uh, what would another example be? Hmm. Adrenal cortical hormones, uh, corticosteroid kind of uh, type of hormones. Last uh, group that I will talk about uh, type of lipid are the uh, icosanoids. These are 20 carbon, they have 20 carbon uh, fat, fatty acid chain found in uh, cell membrane. Many of these uh, include, um, the well, I'll talk about that later. Okay, so uh, as I said, uh, the neutral fats or triglycerides are found in fat, subcutaneous tissue just below the skin. In other words, subcutaneous refers to below, just below the skin. It's also found around many of the internal organs. Phospholipids uh, form an important component or part of the cell membrane. The steroids, as I said, uh, uh, include uh, cholesterol, which are also found in the cell membranes, bile salts, vitamin D, the sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen, and the uh, adrenal cortical hormones, stress hormones. Um, that are produced in the uh, adrenal glands. Some, uh, another uh, type of lipid are the fat soluble vitamins. Uh, some vitamins are uh, uh, nutritional um, molecules, or the molecules that are important nutrition and we absolutely require them and have to take them in or they're synthesized by bacteria in our gut. Vitamin K is an example of that. It's made by bacteria in our gut. So um, 
some of these vitamins uh, are uh, lipids and they're fat soluble. As I said, there's another group of 20 carbon uh, long eicosanoids, fatty acid chain of uh, eicosanoids, and they include prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and thromboxanes. There are many different examples of each of these classes. Um, I should point out to you that uh, many are, not all, but many of them are inflammatory molecules. And most of the uh, non-steroidal non uh, anti-inflammatory drugs target the and inhibit the synthesis of uh, different ones uh, that have uh, different types of eicosanoids that have inflammatory uh, activity. <clears throat> Another important type of lipid are lipoproteins. These types of molecules are part protein and part lipid, lipoproteins, and they are involved in the transport of fatty acids and uh, cholesterol in the bloodstream. Fatty acid and cholesterol are not particularly soluble uh, in uh, water. They're quite hydrophobic, and they would tend to, if they weren't accompanied, transported by uh, if they weren't transported in association with lipoproteins, they would uh, clump together in large clumps, and that would be a problem. So lipoproteins, and some examples which you may have heard of, include high-density lipoprotein, HDL, and uh, low-density lipoprotein, LDL, uh, are used for transporting these kind of um, hydrophobic fatty acids and cholesterol in the bloodstream. Okay, we're going to talk now about uh, the molecules that uh, go towards forming uh, proteins. Protein is one of those four major classes. We've talked about carbohydrates and lipids. Now we'll talk about proteins. The building block, the individual monomers that make up proteins are called amino acids. The amino acids have a particular structure. They have a central carbon surrounded by uh, an amino group and a carboxyl group, surrounded by typically three major groups and linked on either side to other amino acids in a polymer chain. But each an individual amino acid is uh, has an amino group around it and a carboxyl group and a unique uh, side chain. So when we look at them, the generalized diagram of an amino acid would include the central carbon atom shown uh, here. What color should I use here? There's a central carbon atom. It is surrounded by a carboxyl group there and an amino group. Don't worry that it says amine, an amino group, and hydrogen. And on the fourth side, you have what's called an R side chain. You should realize that there are, in fact, 20 different amino acids that go uh, that uh, are found in proteins. So there are 20 different amino acids and each of them differ in the in the R side chain. So they each have a different R side chain. Here's an example of a very simple amino acid that has an R side chain, uh, which is just a hydrogen atom. It's called glycine. There's another example with, a, again, a different R side chain, but the rest of the molecule is the same. I remind you that I, it, what I talk about is what I would like, what, is what I expect you to know. And, uh, you know, here I'm giving you the generalized pattern of uh, structure of amino acid that it has the uh, central carbon, that it has a, sorry, that an amino, uh, the amino acid has a central carbon, I said, and a hydrogen and a amino group and a carboxyl group. Um, and that's fairly the simple uh, chemical, bio, uh, uh, chemical structure of the molecule. But I wouldn't want you to memorize all of the different uh, structure, all of the different R side chains. I did say that glycine is the simplest and has just a hydrogen. 
But other than that, I wouldn't expect you to memorize each different amino acid and what there are side chains is, uh, the structure is. Here are some other examples. In this case, uh, cysteine is, it's important to understand that it's a, our side chain, it's our side chain contains sulfur. It has this uh, sulfhydryl group, uh, sulfur and hydrogen is called sulfhydryl. So proteins are polymers. They are uh, 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 large uh, molecules uh, made up of different combinations of the 20 different types of amino acids. Uh, that they differ from each other, the different proteins. They differ in number of amino acids that make them up and which type of amino acids. They are held together, bound together by what's called a peptide bond. And here's an example, which is found in a dipeptide made of two amino acids strung together. So if you have a dehydration reaction, dehydration or condensation reaction between two amino acids, you get a formation of a dipeptide. Uh, and the reverse is a hydrolytic reaction, the kind of thing that you get in your gut to break it down, the, the amino acids down into individual molecules. Again, another diagram, again, showing, you know, the uh, amino group uh, on one end of the uh, uh, amino acid and the carboxy group here. And here's another one and there. There's the amino group and there's the carboxy group and they're polymerizing into a dipeptide. Uh, every protein molecule, which a polymer, uh, every polymer of uh, amino acids strung together into a protein will have at one end an end terminus at uh, one extreme end and at the opposite end of the uh, polymeric chain have a C terminus. The N terminus refers to the amino group and the C terminus refers to the carboxyl group. So among the 20 different amino acids that are present in proteins, the R side chain differ, as I said. I did tell you the simplest was glycine and I did tell you that cysteine contained uh, sulfhydryl groups. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, the R side chains differ. They can be grouped into different uh, classes. You don't have to memorize that arginine, histidine, and lysine are all positively charged side chains, but you should know that some side chains carry a positive charge, some have a negative charge, some are uncharged, others uh, are unique that they have a, a sulfhydryl group, and that I did mention with cysteine. A very small side group is found in glycine and a ringed group is found in proline. Here's a uh, group of uh, different um, uh, amino acids. Uh, there is an example here of another one that contains sulfur, but I think cysteine are the one, is the one to know that it has a sulfhydryl group and you'll see why I'm emphasizing that. I think uh, maybe in the next unit I'll talk about that when I talk more about structure, overall structure of proteins. Uh, in any case, all of these have hydrophobic side chains. We'll stop here um, on this slide to end unit two, part one.